come, let us worship God and bow low before the, before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Lord, let us together acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves as we celebrate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Kings. The queen of Sheba, having heard of Solomon's fame, came to test him with subtle questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a very numerous retinue and with camels bearing spices, a large amount of gold and precious stones. She came to Solomon and questioned him on every subject in which she was interested. King Solomon explained everything she asked about and there remained nothing hidden from him that he could not explain to her. When the Queen of Sheba witnessed Solomon's great wisdom, the palace he had built, the food at his table, the seating of his ministers, the attendance and garb of his waiters, his banquet service, and the burnt offerings he offered in the temple of the Lord, she was breathless. The report I heard in my country about your deeds and your wisdom is true, she told the king. Though I did not believe the report until I came and saw <clears throat> with my own eyes. <clears throat> I have discovered that they were not telling half me the half. <clears throat> Pardon me. Your wisdom and prosperity surpasses the report I heard. Blessed are your men. Blessed these servants of yours, who stand before you always and listen to your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, whom it is pleased, who it has pleased to place you on the throne of Israel. In his enduring love for Israel, the Lord has made you king to carry out judgment and justice. Then he gave the king one hundred and twenty. Then she gave the king one hundred and twenty gold talents a very large quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did anyone bring such an abundance of spices as the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The word of the Lord. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Commit to the Lord your ways, trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just man tells of wisdom, and his tongue utters what is right. The law of his God is in his heart, and, he, and his steps do not falter. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress. 
and the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The mouth of the just murmur wisdom. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile the person, but the things that come from within are what defile. When he got home away from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable. He said to them, Are even you likewise without understanding? Do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and passes out into the latrine? Thus he declared all foods clean, but what comes out of the man, that is what defiles him. From within the man, from his heart, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. One thing that some of you may know about me is that Taco Bell is my restaurant of choice. I thought about wearing my Taco Bell socks this morning, but the good pastor always says, don't use those visual aids for homily, so I just decided against that. But I, I've come to know the menu pretty well. You know, they've got that Crunch Wrap Supreme and the Beef Chalupa Supreme, a whole variety of items. But there was one that they came out with not too long ago. It was the Grilled Cheese Stuff Beef Burrito. And it is really good, one of the best I've ever had. You know, and I had one one night not too long ago and savored every bite. And when I got to the last bite, I was so disappointed that it was over with. And, you know, it was just so appealing and until about 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, I'm going to keep this clean, okay, because it was the heartburn and the belching that really bothered me and made me regret having eaten that whole bean stuffed grilled cheese burrito. And it's funny sometimes in in, uh, in life in our those things that we observe on a daily basis, um, those things that we absorb, um, when we see them, they can be very appealing. But sometimes, as we process those and as we um, you know translate those um, against uh, maybe our set of values, they can be they can be uh, uh, not appealing, maybe even sinful sometimes. And when we look at today's gospel, Jesus, of course, is, is talking about some of the Jewish laws and maybe some of the, uh, the, the he, he tries to, I guess, uh, point out that, you know, it's not what we eat, it's not what comes into the stomach that defiles us, but it what, it's what comes from the heart. And I think that's very important, and, and certainly I, I fully agree with that. But I do want to take maybe a slightly different perspective with this morning's gospel and look at what comes through our mind, through our intellect, and how we process that, and how how do we change that as it goes out? How might we how might we corrupt something that you know on the surface is good, but as we translate it, as we as we take it against our set of values, how how might we distort that? And so let me let me give you a couple of exam examples, maybe that'll help illustrate this. Um, we see needs in our community, um, and we want to respond. They're, they're, they're good needs. They're, they're people that are in need, and we want to respond to that. Um, and 
but sometimes in the course of doing that, as we as we get uh, get engaged, um, we want to then begin to kind of control it. We want to advance what we believe is the best solution, and sometimes we uh, we kind of dismiss or we we discount other people that are involved in their own ideas. And so, what began as a as a wholesome and and good effort sometimes can get a little distorted. It may still have a good ending, but maybe sometimes we leave bodies in our wake, so to speak. And in terms of how we hurt people because we don't consider everything. I think another example, and we've we've seen a lot of this in the news lately, is sports betting. You can't turn the radio on without hearing an advertisement or drive down the highway without seeing a billboard. It's now online sports betting in particular is now legal. And you can look at that and you can say, well, you know, it's a if you know if managed correctly, it can be a good form of entertainment. Instead of spending my forty or fifty dollars to go to a sporting event, I'll just place it on a wager, and, you know, if I lose it, nothing lost. I would have spent that anyway. But then, you know, there's that incentive. You know, one I heard the other day, if, if you bet on a game and either team makes a three-point goal, a basketball game, then you're going to win $200 in, in betting credits. And so what happens and what may be on the surface seems okay um, can, you know, what can seem like entertainment can all of a sudden become an addiction. And so these things that we see and that we, we, we translate can start out being good, but just depending on how we respond to that, you know, maybe it's not good. And I think our challenge is, is to, um, to, to see these things that, or take these things that we observe and that we ab absorb and really to, uh, we can assure that we, 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 can, we can turn them into something as good, if not better, by validating them against the basis that we know to be truth and that is that is scripture that is the catechism that is the, the magisterium of the church those teachings that is Deacon Tim's homiletic insights well maybe not that last one you know uh, <laughs> but no it is those things that we know that when we struggle well, how do we things aren't always black and white we know that and we turn to the teachings those things that we can rely on that we've relied on for 2,000 years and that we can rely on today to help us to know how to take something that is good, translate that, that input, so to speak, and translate that into a, something that is even as good or even better. I think when we look at our first reading, we have uh, Solomon was clearly intelligent. He knew all the answers to all the questions in the world. But does he translate those answers into something that is wise? I think when you read further in, uh, in that first reading, uh, you, you, know, you see that Solomon turned away from God. He did a lot of bad things at the end of his, at the end of his, uh, his reign as king. And I think which begs the question, was he truly, was he Solomon the wise or was he simply Solomon the intelligent? I think if we uh, properly translate those things that we observe using what the church has teach, uh, teaches us and what it uses to decide right from wrong. If we truly do that, then we will uh, not just be intelligent, but we will be wise. seeking the gift of wisdom so we may grow in what we see and what we hear for the truth we ask the Lord and we entrust him our petitions and our prayers this morning for our church may it continue to provide sound guidance and wisdom that enables us to know the truth we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for our church in our diocese may we listen and work together to become a community open to all as we consider all that is shared in our listening sessions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering anxiety, depression, and other mental challenges due to isolation or abandonment or other setbacks, may they find the hope that is found in Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our political leaders, that they learn to work together, willing to make compromise and willing to do what is best for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and those who have died, especially those for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Loving God, turn to us as we entrust these intentions to you. Give us, Lord, the graces we need to serve you in all that we do in one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all wisdom. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty. Grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, consoled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall have their fill.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just to let you know, immediately after Mass, we will have our adoration until uh, 8 o'clock this evening. The Lord be with you. And, <clears throat> and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Salutaris hostia, que celipandis hostium, bella premund hostilia, dauro Trino que domino, sit sempiterna gloria, qui vitam sin etermino, nobis donec in patria. It's singulis. Very good. <clears throat> um, I'm actually meeting with Bailey this morning, um, Henderson, to uh, talk about putting together a will. I don't have a will, so I figured if I'd start thinking about that, so she's gonna help me with that. <laughs> Use some of her. <laughs> 